you did, Black Shalom, I'm purified through the water that got us up this shots out to the tub tribe. Uh, support the people, not the cause, not none of our name. Um, I want to uh, make a little sideline trip real quick. Okay? So, those last videos or whatever, and uh, this video, or the one before this video, excuse me, was um, the Indian slavery. Now, um, this video, we're finna go up. Just real quick, because I'm getting to a point, I gotta give you this, I gotta give you that, I gotta give you this, so right now, I think I'm gonna start going up with you, alright? Let's start adding in my little two cents. So, uh, again, same usual videos, how they usually are, but this one, it's going up, alright? Today, Black Slum Line, Pure Fire Trooper Water, they got us up there, let's go. Cue that music out. American privilege keeps blurring my vision. Ever wondered about the origins of black people as depicted in the Bible? The narratives of these individuals are deeply woven into the fabric of biblical history. Their legacies have echoed throughout centuries, shaping the course of nations and faiths. Consider the Ethiopian eunuch a pivotal figure who is celebrated as the forefather of Christianity in Africa. His transformative encounter with Philip the Evangelist left a lasting mark on his homeland. Then there's Simon of Cyrene, a man from modern-day Libya, who was called upon to assist Jesus in his most vulnerable moment. His contribution forever intertwines Africa in the grand narrative of human redemption. And let's not forget the Cushite wife of Moses, an Ethiopian woman whose identity and country of origin were significant enough to be mentioned in the sacred text. Their stories raise an intriguing question. Where did these great people, the Africans, come from? To unravel this mystery, we must journey back to the times of Noah and his sons. Biblical history presents an intriguing narrative, tracing the origins of humanity post the Great Flood to Noah's three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. It is in this lineage that we find the roots of black people particularly tied to Ham, whose name is interpreted to mean black. In the vast tapestry of biblical narratives, Ham's lineage plays a significant role. Genesis chapter 10 records that Ham was the father of Cush, and this forms the first reference of a lineage associated with black people. The term Cush has been widely used interchangeably with Ethiopia, indicating a strong correlation with African heritage. Now let's delve a little deeper. The name Ham is intriguing, isn't it? It's more than just a name. It's a symbol, a representation of color and identity. The interpretation of Ham's name as black is not just a random association. It's a testament to the rich, dark hues of the African people, a nod to their roots tracing back to this biblical figure. But it's not just about Ham. The narrative extends to his offspring. Cush, a son of Ham, has his own tale to weave. The Cushites, descendants of Cush, are frequently mentioned throughout the Bible, further solidifying this connection. The Cushites, who occupied the land of Cush, laid the groundwork for what we now know as the African continent. What's fascinating here is the interconnectedness of these narratives. The lineage of Ham, the symbolism of his name, the story of his son Cush, and the legacy of the Cushites, all intertwining to form a rich tapestry of African heritage within the Bible. This biblical journey offers a unique perspective, a different lens through which we can view the origins of black people. It's a narrative steeped in history, symbolism, and ancestral roots, painting a picture of a lineage that has left an indelible mark on world history. Ham's lineage, particularly through his son Cush, became the progenitors of black people. This journey of tracing the roots of black people in the Bible brings us to this conclusion shedding light on a history that continues to resonate today. From Ham's lineage, a particularly notable son emerges, Cush. This son of Ham is responsible for a lineage that has left an indelible mark on biblical history, the Cushites. The term Cushites is frequently used in the Bible and its importance cannot be overstated. So, who exactly were the Cushites? Cushites, according to the Bible, were descendants of Cush, who was a son of Ham and a grandson of Noah. The term Cushites is often associated with the region of Cush, a historical land that is widely accepted to be part of present-day Ethiopia. 
Cush's descendants, the Cushites, are frequently mentioned in the Bible, and their influence was significant. Cush and his descendants were known for their strength and prowess. The Cushites were known to be mighty warriors, skilled in the use of the bow. They were also renowned for their physical beauty. In the Book of Numbers, we find the story of Moses' Cushite wife, a testament to the beauty and allure of Cushite women. Interestingly, the term Cushites has, over time, become synonymous with Africans. This is largely due to the geographical location of the ancient land of Cush in present-day Ethiopia. The Bible's frequent mention of the Cushites and their notable contributions to biblical history is a testament to the significant role of Africans in biblical times. Furthermore, the term Cush is often used interchangeably with Ethiopia in the Bible, further cementing the association of the Cushites with Africa. The Cushites, therefore, represent a significant link between the Bible and Africa, a testament to Africa's rich biblical history. But the story of the Cushites doesn't end there. Their descendants continued to thrive and expand, eventually populating a significant portion of the African continent. Over time, intermarriages with other tribes under the lineage of Ham led to the formation of various African tribes and nations. The Cushites, descendants of Cush, are widely believed to be the ancient ancestors of today's Africans. Their influence and legacy continue to resonate, underscoring the deep roots of African heritage and biblical history. The world as we know it today was once undivided, so how did Ham's descendants come to inhabit Africa? In the wake of the Great Flood, Noah's sons were tasked with a monumental endeavor to repopulate the earth. The world was their proverbial oyster, an expansive canvas on which they could paint the future of humanity. Yet, it wasn't a random stroke of the brush that led Ham's descendants to Africa, but rather a carefully orchestrated division of the world among Noah's sons. Let's take a moment to journey back in time, to the world as it was after the flood. A world united, undivided by continents or countries. A world where the descendants of Noah were the only inhabitants. Each son, Shem, Japheth, and Ham, were given a portion of this world to call their own, a land for their descendants to grow and thrive in. Ham, whose name translates to black, became the patriarch of what is today known as Africa. His son Cush, born in the post-flood era, became the progenitor of the Cushites. The land of Cush, often referred interchangeably with Ethiopia, was part of the vast territory that Ham's descendants came to inhabit. The division was not merely geographical, it was also a division of cultures, languages, and racial identities. The descendants of Ham, the Cushites, developed unique characteristics that distinguished them from their cousins. Their skin, kissed by the sun, became the canvas on which the story of the African people was written. But why Africa, some may ask? Well, the Bible doesn't explicitly explain the rationale behind this division. However, it's plausible that each son, guided by divine wisdom or simply by the natural resources and opportunities of the land, led their descendants to the regions that best suited their growth and development. Fast forward to today, the descendants of Ham, the Cushites, have spread across the vast continent of Africa, contributing to its rich tapestry of cultures, languages, and traditions. The African lineage in the Bible is not just a story of geographical division, but also a testament to human resilience and adaptation. The division of the world among Noah's sons resulted in Ham's descendants, the Cushites, occupying the land mass we now know as Africa. The presence of black people in the Bible is an intriguing aspect of biblical history. We've journeyed together through the pages of the Bible, uncovering the significant roles of black people or Africans, as they are often referred to, in the biblical narrative. From the Ethiopian eunuch who is revered as the progenitor of Christianity in Africa, to Simon of Cyrene, an African who played a crucial role in the redemption of humanity by helping Jesus carry the cross, and the Cushite wife of Moses. Their stories are etched in the annals of biblical history, evidence of the undeniable African footprint in the Bible. We trace the lineage of Africans back to one of Noah's sons, Ham, whose name interestingly translates to black. After the catastrophic flood that wiped out humanity, Noah's sons, Shem, Japheth and Ham, 
became the progenitors of the human race. Ham fathered Cush, and from this lineage emerged the people referred to as the Cushites throughout the Bible. Cush, a term often interchanged with Ethiopia, became the occupied land of Ham's descendants, marking the beginnings of the African lineage. Remember, before the flood, the earth was one landmass, not divided into continents as we know them today. The partitioning happened post-flood, leading to the dispersion of Noah's sons and their descendants across the globe. The sons of Ham, including Cush, spread out, intermarried with other tribes and ultimately inhabited the vast continent we now call Africa. The division of the landmass among Noah's sons also led to the occupation of other parts of the world. Japheth's descendants are believed to have occupied what is now Europe and America, while Shem's descendants settled in the Middle East and Asia. Ham, on the other hand, got the global south, with Africa being a part of it. The journey of tracing the origins of the African people in the Bible is fascinating, revealing a profound connection between biblical history and the African lineage. From the youngest son of Noah, Ham, through his son Cush, we see the beginnings of a lineage that would spread across a continent, making significant contributions to the biblical narrative. From these biblical accounts, we see that the lineage of Africans can be traced back to Noah's son, Ham, making their presence in the Bible both significant and profound.